Well, anyway, okay, okay. Uh, today's uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk about assessing thinking, assessing thinking, and and as I was uh, just seeking the Lord about this, this is a big, big, uh, and broad topic that breaks off into a whole lot of a whole lot of things, and and I won't be able to finish today, but I broke I broke it down uh, section by section, and this is just. The first, uh, the first one that we'll be talking about is obsessive thinker and the belief. And if the Lord permits, uh, sometime in the future, I would, you know, we'll go to intrusive thoughts. Uh, number three, uh, OCD and the belief. How should a Christian view obsessive compulsive disorder? Uh, number four, my thoughts, God's thoughts, the Great Exchange. Uh, number five, negative thinking. Never take God by surprise. And the last one would be. What is scrupulosity? Uh, that's what the Pharisees and the Sadducees uh, suffered from. They, they, they were. They, they knew what that means is that they know how to. It's called religious OCD. They know how to take the scriptures and turn it to fit them, but condemn you. You know, uh, scrupulosity. It took me a while to be able to say that word, but it's called religious OCD. They can just take stuff and just flip it around. And, and you'll be like, well, the word says this, and, 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 you be, and they'll say, well, nobody means this. But you clearly know what it says, what it means. But because it was the religious people with the titles and the authority, their weight uh, superseded what you were reading because they was the doctors of the law. And so, uh, but anyway, uh, the foundational uh, scripture for today is Philippians 4 and 6. It's uh, be careful for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding shall keep your hearts and your mind through Christ Jesus. The international version says, be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Okay? Uh, obsessive thinking and the belief. When I think of someone who uh, had obsessive thinking, Saul comes to mind. Uh, Saul was a, a first king of Israel, and after Saul was anointed king, the Bible says that Saul turned and God gave him a new heart. That's in 1 Samuel 10. And the thing that really just got me the power of God, how uh, in my mind I was just thinking that as soon as uh, Samuel had anointed uh, uh, Saul, you know, he turned in his heart was changed. That's just how powerful God can change an individual, you know, and, and, and turn him around just like that. You know, with me, it, 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 it took a while because I had to come to church to be a disciple and still be a disciple. But with Saul, it was a boom. He just turned and he had a new heart. And that gave me uh, great consolation to know that God can do anything. Anything. <laughs> and uh, uh in uh, 1 Samuel 13, uh, Saul disobeyed God. This going through the, the thing to get to the main point. Uh, 1 Samuel 13, Saul disobeyed God by not destroying King Agag and all his possessions. Uh, then Saul offered up burnt fellowship offerings on the battlefield, which he was supposed to wait for the prophet Samuel to do. Uh, 1 Samuel 15, Saul, Saul reigned as king was over for his disobedience. So, uh, 1 Samuel 18, Saul's jealousy was evident, but the mastermind behind the whole ordeal was lust. Samuel, uh, not Samuel, but uh, uh, Saul's obsession, obsessive thinking was anxiety. Anxiety is, is, is up under the strong man of lust. But it starts by what you see, then it enters to your heart, then it enters into your emotion, which is your heart. That was the thing that drove Saul, uh, his obsessive thinking. And we're going to get to that in just a second. It's, it's very interesting on how you can look at one thing, and if you don't have the discernment of the Spirit of the Lord to, to break this thing down to let you go behind the scene, you'll be fighting this surface thing, but the real strong man is behind the scene pushing all the, pulling all the strings, and you're fighting a losing battle because you're only fighting what you see. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, uh, in uh, uh, 1 Samuel 18, uh, Saul was jealous. Jealousy was evident, but the mastermind behind the war did was lust. 
you can see this in uh, verse 7, you have to turn there, but it's verse uh, Samuel 18 and 7. It says, when uh, David went out to war, they was all coming back. It says, and the women answered one another as they played and said, Saul hath slain his thousands and David his ten thousand. And Saul was wrought. He saw it. He saw it. And, he, and, 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 and the Bible said, and it displeased him. And, and he said that, uh, that to himself, that they have described unto David 10,000, and to me they described but 1,000. Uh, what can I say more? Uh, they, uh, Saul, I, David, from that day forth. The Bible says in verse 9, verse 70, 18, verse 9, Saul, I, David, from that day and forth. Obsessive thinking comes from what you see, your circumstances. It, 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 uh, it wait for you to, uh, for an event to happen in your life. And when that event happens, and if it don't go the way that you want it to go, you begin to think about it. And when you begin to think about it, you begin to overly think about it. And then when you don't put it to rest, it becomes obsessive. And when it becomes obsessive, anxiety sets in because you can't get what you want or you didn't get the desired outcome and behind that anxiety is lust because you can't get what you want the uh uh the obsessive thinking always starts with an eye then the head and finally the heart the bible says saul kept his eyes on david from that day forward you know if you read uh that's in uh first second 18 10 to 13. obsessive thinking was Saul was in Saul's head. He wanted to kill David. Saul was double-minded. He loved David one moment and hated David the next. James 1 and 8 says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. That is what obsessive thinking does. It causes a person to be split in their thinking. What does the Bible say uh, uh, liken this man to? In James 1, 5 and 7. If any lack wisdom, let him ask of God that given to all men liberally and afraid of not and it shall be given to him but let him ask in faith not wavering for he that wavers is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and toss for let not that man think that he shall receive anything from the Lord Saul didn't realize the dangerous grounds that he was on by not turning back to God his lust for power his lust for uh, being feared that this little guy that the women and the people was going crazy over was going to take him off his throne. So what he decided to do, he decided just to, ah, I'm just going to keep my eyes on him. He's just going to look at him. He's just going to, he's going to find ways to make sure that his place in history would not be trampled on by some dude that, that God has called. And so, and so, uh, obsessive thinking always act out of emotions. Now, what, from what he saw, it went from what he saw, from what he was seeing, to his head. He had got this thing in his head. He began to figure this thing out. In 1 Samuel 19 and 1, uh, Saul was talking to Jonathan, his son, and he said uh, that, he, that we ought to kill me. See, it went from what he was seeing to what was in his head, now he's traveling down into his heart. This guy was sitting up in here thinking of ways to kill him, but the, the quickest way to get to him was through Jonathan because he knew that him and David was tight. And he thought that Jonathan would agree with him, but Jonathan wasn't feeling that because Jonathan and David was like blood brothers. Matter of fact, Jonathan took his ear, his royalty stuff off, and gave it to David in submission of, of saying, David, I know that God has called you. I don't mind being number two. I don't think I would do that unless God has really called me to do it. Then me and the Lord will still move right by, you know. Because in my mind, was for my boy, it's for my boy, but for somebody to be heir to a throne and give it to his friend, I mean, that is, that, that is, that is pretty, good. That's, I mean, he good. He, he had to hear from God. That's move right on for that. And so, uh, food for thought. The spirit behind the sense of thinking is anxiety and the strong man by, uh, and the strong man behind anxiety is lust. Saul wanted his position. Uh, not, but this is not always the case. Behind the sense of thinking, if not checked, the occult 
is not far behind. Uh, if not careful, the very thing you know what is an abomination to God, obsessive thinking people will unknowingly involve themselves in the occult. Saul got into witchcraft. Uh, that's in 1 Samuel 28, 1 through 13. Remember when Saul was trying to hear from Samuel and God told Samuel that he rejected Saul and and, and Saul and Samuel died and and and, and uh, Samuel I mean Saul went to the witch of Endor. And matter of fact, this, this, this was one of the witches that he had banned from the beginning. But this was the one that he went to. So obsessive thinking people, not always the case, but the majority of the ones that I have run into, ministered to, and uh, uh, somewhat counseled, these people have something hanging around in, in the occult because that obsessive thinking uh, makes your mind uh, split. You, 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 you know, I give you a, an example of a, of a person that's obsessive thinking. They always have to alter. Now, somebody will say, well, what's wrong with that? They always question their salvation. Uh, they always question what God. They, they're trying to get something out of the man or the woman of God, and then when the man or woman of God don't give them what they want, they will begin to argue with them or backbite against them. Because that obsessive thinking, because that lust wants what it wants, and, and because the word of God don't agree with them, they want to come down and get validation from, from where they know uh, they can get validation is from the preacher. And when the preacher don't give it to them, now they don't want to come to church. Now they're split and they think. Now they're from this church to that church because they're trying to get a word that's going to try to manipulate the man or woman of God to where they're going to try to prove the man or woman of God who told them what the word of God says is wrong. That's part of that scrupulosity that, that uh, religious OCD. You know, you just you just determined that you're going to find a preacher somewhere that's going to tell you what you want to hear because the, the hidden man, the strong man that's there is lust. You want to get it at all costs, but the lust had not manifested itself because it's dressed up looking like church folks. Does that, that make sense? Yeah. Okay. That's good. Okay. And so, uh, obsessive uh, thinking people, uh, oh, let me talk about this occult thing. When, when, when uh, Saul had got to this point, he was so desperate to hear from God that it was, it was almost as if, if we met Saul and we didn't know that the hand of the Lord was on him, the advice that he was trying to get from us, you would never thought that he had a walk with God. Because that's how far some people can go with this obsessive thinking because their mind is everywhere. They have a hidden agenda, but they're trying to find validation from anywhere. And this is where uh, strong discernment will come in. You can look and see the things of what people have on, what they into, the type of friends that they in, because the Lord will begin to let you see that behind all that obsessive thinking, the mind is sporadic. They're not really coming for a word from God. They're trying to, trying to get you to agree with them. And the Lord will ask will give you the spirit of sermon to say, ask him about this. Ask him about that. I remember Benny Hinn was talking about this, uh, this guy one day. This guy came to his, his healing crusade one day. And the Lord, he was a doctor. I think he was a doctor. And the guy came up to Benny Hinn. And Benny Hinn just looked up and uh and the man was looking, you know, he had this look like I'm ready to go down. Oh, yeah. and, uh, <laughs> and and Benny Hinn said, uh, his guys got positioned behind the guy, and, 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 and Benny Hinn said, don't touch him. Don't touch him. And and he, they, his guys just stood back, and matter of fact, Benny Hinn did like this, and, he, and they fell down, and, and he was making sure that the guy that was behind him That's right. did not touch him. And so he gave this guy a word. He said, go home, and burn your books. Mm. And the guy just looked at him. And, and the guy, and Benny said, you come down here, and he told him exactly what he come down there for. And the man hadn't even told him, because you know, Benny, he didn't know the heaven what? And uh, what's that? And he comes down, he's out of, you know. Yeah. Right. And, so, and so he come down, and the guy didn't even say nothing, but God had given a word of wisdom to a word of knowledge to Benny Hinn and told him what this guy was down here for. And the guy, he just stood there. And he said, go home and burn your books. Well, the guy got mad. You know, he just, he just turned and walked off. 
And Benny Hinn, I, I wasn't paying attention, but one day I caught the, uh, the tail, the, 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 I guess the continuation of that, and Benny Hinn said that the doctor had gave him a call. And the doctor was mad. And he said the doctor was expecting for him to do what, you know, uh, who's the guy? Uh, 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 Elijah and the guy, the, 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 the left, yeah. Yeah, he both performed some, you know. <laughs> and so the guy was calling Benny to give him a piece of his mind, but Benny told him, he said, did you get rid of the books? And the guy told him, he said, I went to school and I spent thousands of dollars for these books. I'm not getting rid of these books. He said, well, you're going to die. And the man said, what? He said, he said, I can't get rid of these books. He said, these books which you have is rooted in the occult, and that's tying your healing up. And the guy said, well, I'm not going to do it. So they hung up the phone. The guy's health was deteriorating. And, and my point is, the, the guy died. And the guy, the point is, is that the guy wanted to hear a word other than what other people was telling him or the word of God was telling him. He was trying to go to the man of God to get something other than what God had said to validate his point that he was going to make God out of a liar and this man a God. See how it works? And so that obsessive thinking would lead to the occult. At the same time, uh, Benny Hinn told another story. He said this lady had uh, went to school and had subscribed to all these books, because her professor had led her into all this astronomy, astronomy stuff, and she bought all these books. But this time, when God told him to tell her, you need to get rid of your books, this woman got rid of her books. And she was healed. Because she had, I don't know if she saw the episode, but she believed the word, and whatever way she was going to get uh, uh, healing or consolation from anybody, it was not working. So what she did, she went to the crusade, and Benny Hinn spoke a word to her and told her, you need to get rid of your books. And she got rid of her books, and she was healed. So when we obey the word of God, that obsessive thinking, it will go. Because the word of God would trump all of that, just like that. It will trump that. But, but it, it all starts with uh, us being obedient to the word of God to believe what God says is fine. It's fine. Uh, the, I, you know, I, I don't know if you have, but I, I, I had a, I don't say I suffer from, but I, I think, I, I call myself a deep thinker, but it was nothing but a devil that I was uh, cultivating, I guess. It was called obsessive thinking. You know, I just want to go a little bit deeper. I just want to, you know, no. The Lord like saying, no, this is what it is right here because you can't handle it down there. But I'm just going to go down there and just see what it is. And, and to my dismay, uh, you go down there and you find a problem after another problem. A situation after another situation. And my wife, she be like, I just don't want to hear that. <laughs> and, and, and RJ just going to come out of his room. He just, and I'm, and, and what this obsessive thinking does, it will cause you to get mad with them, but to flip it around, because the religious OCD will slip in and say, you don't want to listen to me, and you ain't no woman of God, you ain't no man of God, because you supposed to, y'all see what I'm saying? <laughs> it was many days that I saw that that bar on that screen go 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 up, the numbers speed up, that bar even go up on that TV. <laughs> oh, 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 you oh you supposed to be a helpmate. You don't want, you know, so it will it will <laughs> You see how you see how I do the religious thing in there? You supposed to be my helpmate? And, and, and you're supposed to be here, and you're supposed to be there. And she's sitting up there looking at me like, you need to go sit down. I don't come to you like that. Do I come to you like that? Oh, yours ain't bigger than mine. See, with all obsessive thing, it makes it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and for somebody to say, the Lord said, be still and know I'm God, you be like, uh, but it got to be more than that. It got to be more because you're not trying to hear because it's lust fueling. It. It's something that's there, that's unmet, that's that's uh, ailing you, that God is saying, you know what, you need to sit down and rest. And just because I don't answer you because you want me to answer you, don't mean I'm not answering you. You just need to sit down and shut up. <laughs> I know the Lord told me that many, many times. 
be quiet. I remember when RJ was a little boy, when we first got married, we tried to divide our arms. They went through all that, but we ain't going through all that. We was in there, RJ be like, yeah, be quiet. And we be like, that's the Lord talking. <laughs> <laughs> But, but I just, I, I don't know, move right along, I don't need to tell all the family business, but, but uh, assessor thinking people has a mindset, a complex, uh, like Saul. Saul disobeyed God, thus the spirit departed. Saul tried to force Samuel to bless him, the kingdom was torn. Saul lost control of the kingdom, his household, his job, all that was gone. Saul had a love-hate relationship with David, jealousy, uh, envy, destroys relationship. Saul played the victim. Y'all see? The devil has three goals in mind for us, uh, 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 obsessive thinking people. Number one, torment and torture. Number two, keep us from knowing Christ. Number three, keep us from serving God effectively. I got to get credit where credit is due. I got that from Derek Prince. Uh, obsessive thinking people are harassed by demons. Obsessive thinking people are captives in their own mind. Obsessive thinking people know something is wrong but can't escape because they insist on doing it themselves by rehearsing the problem over and over. And every time you rehearse it, the devil would give you new ways of blaming people, fault finding, and finding new ways to keep yourself in the clear. And if you do have any responsibility, it's that much. Is that, well, 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 what do you think about what you did? Well, uh, the only thing I did was throw the pen. But the pen caused a whole uproar. Man, it's just a pen. You see, that's what that obsessive thinking. It, it justifies you throwing a, a brick through somebody's window because they, they cut you off. You, you Never mind the brick that you threw. It's just, I just threw a brick, but they tore up my car. That kind of way, that and it, and it gets it, it just keeps going. The, the, the more you want to feed it, the more stronger that lust feels because it's something lacking in your life. Okay, uh, we overthink when we put too much time into thinking about or analyzing something a way that is more harmful than helpful. When we over when we are overthinking, when thoughts about problems, relational issues, and even uh, plans dominate our thinking waking hours. It'll keep you up. Obsessive thinking people, they stay up. They lay down with it, they wake up with it. I remember I, I used to get up with it. You know, soon as soon as police be in there praying, I, I start off, you know, hey, praise the Lord, hallelujah. You know, and you know what happened today at school was. And she just look at me like, really? And I'd be, oh, 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 oh okay, you want to start off? And, 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 and she, this is my prayer time. Go back in there. And I slam the door here. There you go. I hope the Lord bring a big hand down and whack your broad head. You know that kind of stuff. That's what it does. You'll lay down with it. You'll wake up with it. It's it's a it's a demonic spirit that causes anxiety, and the strong man behind an anxiety is lust, because you 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 want something that you cannot have. You know I think um, um, Galatians talk about uh, talk about you know, what is these wars worn in your members? That's what's happening. Because out of the abundance of the heart, your mouth will speak. And sometimes, you you know, when you're talking about the problem, you magnify the problem and by not giving God the glory. And God is saying, all you need to do is shut up. Because you're giving life to what you're saying. And what you're saying really don't make sense because it's trying to pump you up. It's trying to fuel you up. Humble yourself. Humble yourself in the first place where God told me to myself to be quiet. Get somewhere and sit down and just be quiet. And uh, it was hard to do. And, and to some degree, I'm still working on it. But for the most part, it's one of those things to where I found out that a lot of my problems are solved. And I just be quiet. Just be still and know that he's God. He see it all. He, he see it all. Colossians uh, 2. Uh, 3 and 2 says, set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth, on the earth. Question, how do we set our minds on the things above? Number one, we focus and refocus our eyes on Christ. We focus and refocus our eyes on Christ. Number two, put to death what is earthly. Number three, put on the new self. Number four, let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. 
Number five, let the word of Christ richly indwell us. Number six, give thanks to God. Certain emotions such as broken promises, unmet needs, uh, people hurting us, day, uh, dreams unfulfilled, uh, being, not being married, business failure, adulterous affair, promiscuity, beha uh, promiscuous behaviors, failed relationships as such, is, a, is my fault, he or she is left, etc. Too much overthinking would lead to over-assessive thinking, which can give the enemy an open door. Open door. He, he will look for anything. Anything just to get in. Uh, when an event looms on the horizon, a horizon that promised to be painful or otherwise unpleasant, we tend to overthink it. The enemy is waiting to tap into our overthinking. Ever heard the term? The devil is in the details. All you have to do is just keep this, keep rehearsing it. He'll find a way. You can lose your belt. And 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 if you overthink it, the, the, the that would say somebody stole it. You'd be like, yeah, I did let him borrow. He never gave it back. And, and come to find out, somebody said, well, here's your belt right here. And you sitting up there thinking like, oh, oh. But you never mind the thought that you gave the enemy room to come in to accuse somebody. <laughs> yeah. It says, an inward war, it says, uh, an inward war can lead us to fight with each other. Thus destroy a relationship that God has never intended for us to fight when we think too much out of what we see, we, uh, we think too much out of our head, thus tapping into our emotions. Uh, this is an example. I, re I remember me and Felicia, we attended this church conference. And uh, this church conference was in session, uh, meaning it had 15-minute breaks per session. And uh, we was uh, in a 15-minute uh, break. We decided, you know, between the break, we're going to look at books, CDs, and DVDs, and T-shirts, and things like that. And I told Felicia, I'm going to check on our seats. Because we was at church, we was at a conference. You know how sometimes church folks can act. You know, you can put your stuff right here, and you come back, and it's gone, or it's, it's over there somewhere. And so I went to go back and check, and I come back out, and I stood in the door, and I saw this man talking to my wife. I ain't like that. And in my mind, I stood there, uh, huh, what is this? Uh, what is this going on? And my thinking became all kind of stuff. Just like that. Just like that. And I can hear the Lord telling me, you know, uh, war is starting. War is starting. You know, it's always been there. And it don't have anything to do with what you saw. It's an inward lust that's, that, that, you, that you want, an unmet need that, that, that wants to be filled so bad until where any avenue that the enemy can give you to get that thing to drive you in a direction to where he wants to go, he'll do it. He'll do it. That's a true story. And so I sat there and I just looked at it, and I was, and you ever have this thought, you think thoughts, and you say, that's not my way of thinking? I don't think like that. When, when I was doing it, I was looking, these thoughts just came just like that. And they'll say, stand there and look, just stand there and watch. I stood there and watch. And 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 all this time. I can hear the Lord saying, that's a war going on. That's something that's way before y'all even met. That's a mom and pop issue. That's a, a, a broken relationship in college that you that you just walked away from or, 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 or something that you got entangled with that, that, uh, that, that, that is full of that. And it's trying to come into your marriage to destroy your relationship and ultimately your relationship with me. And so I stood there. And I was thinking to myself, asking myself a dumb question, well, where is this thought coming from? And the Lord was saying, it's the enemy. He's trying to get you to react to something that don't have anything to do from what you're seeing. Get your eyes off of what you're seeing and get out of your head and let me deal with your heart instead of you trying to deal with your heart. And uh, so... I just sat there and I went up there and I played it off and things like that. Yeah, man, what's going on? And, and, and come to find out, this dude white walked up. Oh, yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah that's right. And I was like, and you know, you just, the air just went out. The air just went out. And so it was just one of those things to where when the Lord begins to deal with us, uh, it all starts with the relationship. When, you, when, you, when we develop a relationship with him, then he begins to tap into the things that's in our heart that we don't have no knowledge of. 
man, I thank God for that. I thank God for that. I thank God. And, 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 and let me reiterate that. That only comes from a relationship. Some people call it head knowledge. You know, oh, I'm just thinking. No, 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 no. People who walk with God, God can trust him because he knows that when he reveals the heart that this person is not going to run. It's not going to go do things sporadically. Not going to go do, we're going to go to the Word of God. We're going to go get wise counsel. We're going to deal with this thing. Uh, uh, deal with the scripture says where it says that if anybody has a fault against one another, you know, we, we, we don't go and just act out of flesh. We sit patiently and wait on the Lord and, and, and let God deal with our heart. Amen? Amen? You know, James 4 and 1 says, From whence comes wars and fighting among you? Come they not even from your lust that war within your members? You lust and have not. You kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. And uh, you fight and war. Yet you have not because you ask not. And when you ask, you receive not because you ask the midst. That you may consume it upon your own lust. So obsessive thinking people, not always the case. But if that obsessive thinking don't come into check, Anxiety sets in, and strong man is lust. The bottom line with, with obsessive thinking people is lust. You have not because what, whatever what you want, whatever what you're trying to do, it's, it's, it's not God. It's something that you want, rather uh, something that God wants for you. And you will, you'll go and, and get it at all costs if, if, if it goes unchecked. Uh, it says you adulterers and adulteress. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is an enemy with God? Whosoever therefore be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. Now check this out. This is what this thing what the Lord revealed to me at the conference thing. He said, Who would ever think obsessive thinking is linked to being an enemy against God? Go tell the average Christian that. That you're an enemy against God with your thinking. Remember, the spirit behind obsessive thinking is anxiety. And the strong man behind anxiety is lust. Notice what verse 2 says. You lust and have not. You kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Obsessive thinkers want things they cannot, cannot obtain. They overthink because they desire to have or want things to turn out the way they want, even at the expense of hurting others. Wow. Yeah. Saul was willing to do anything to regain the throne. He was willing to do it. He, 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 he even tried to kill his own boy to get the throne back. Remember, he, uh, as Samuel told him that the, that the kingdom, that God had found a man after his own heart, he pleaded with him, and as Samuel turned, he tore his robe. He was willing to go that far. I, I wouldn't say to assault the man of God, but to do anything. If, if, if he could get any part of the kingdom to get recognition, to fulfill a, a void in his life, which was lust. He wanted the power. I see that from drug dealers. I see that in business. I see that at the school that I work. I see it all the time. I see where people just want that authority. They want something, but I thank God that I can look and see that it's something more. Because the more that they, I said you do this, and you need to do it, and, and I'm looking, I'm, I'm saying, wow, they must be hurting somewhere. It must be some type of disappointment. Lord, open the door so I can come in or somebody can come in and ask, what are you, Lord? What are you what's really ailing you? What's really going on? Because, it, because the devil is after the relationship. If he can get you uh, behind your excessive thinking to come down on the heart of somebody else, then the relationship is gone. Where is your witness? And then the devil is going to always make it where there's other people watching. So when you go and get your platform, the, 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 you don't be surprised somebody jump on and say, hey, man, I saw you. You yeah, fighting over there in the park the other day. It's in your manifestation. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, now what, 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 what are you going to be able to say behind that? Because it's true. You know, uh, the, the, uh, verse, verse 3, it says, you ask and you receive not because you ask the miss, that you may consume it upon your own lust. Uh, uh, the meaning of adultery is an adulterous uh, adulteration of marriage by the addition of a third person. Adultery is voluntarily sexual activity between a married person and someone other than his or her spouse. Look at this here. This obsessive thinking is not checked. 
Look carefully at verse 4. Look at what assessive thinking will do if it goes unchecked. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, man and woman, know ye not that the friendship of the world is an enemy with, uh, with God. It causes us to become an enemy against God. Why? Because we allow another entity, a third thing spirit, to enter into our space that it is exclusively belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah, it, and, and this, this won't preach. I thank God for y'all letting me, because this won't preach in most churches. It won't preach. Because nobody that's, that call themselves saved and filled with the Holy Ghost will ever think that they're uh, 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 obsessive thinkers are, or, or, and they'll believe it. Because one saved, always saved. And, and God is this and God, and, and they'll flip it. You, you, you ain't always been saved. You ain't, all, you ain't perfect. That's how they'll flip this thing around. And, and so, uh, but, it, but it's, it's, it's spiritual adultery because the only person who's supposed to consume my thinking is Christ. Because Paul said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Amen. So, uh, it, you know, I heard Dr. Bird said earlier, and it preached to you first, it was preaching to me. Because it was just one of those things to where I could see, God was allowing me to see the places where I was at. And, and the people that, that was around that was watching for only one purpose, to destroy, looking to destroy that when you, that, 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 that if you, God ever raises up and, and, and you have a platform or whatever that platform, it could be in a corner or in Montaigne somewhere, that devil will always be able to say, I saw you in Magnolia Park, you were over there shooting guns too. This big speech, I wasn't really shooting no gun. And your witness is gone. Your witness is going to be because the world is going to follow the world. They're going to listen to them. You may have one or two standing there saying, Amen, brother. But the mother 99, they're going over there and, 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 and is that true? Was well, the man of God really over there doing that? And you're sitting there repenting to God. And the God was like saying, I told you to cast your cares upon me. I told you that th this is not the first time this thing manifests itself. It manifests itself here. It manifests itself there. And I was letting you know I was there all the time. So now, now, I'm going to really deal with it because you've been exposed now. Do, do this make sense? Yeah. Okay, I'm coming to a close. Uh, one of the benefits of being a Christ follower is when our thinking becomes obscured and our hearts become unsettled, the Holy Spirit will begin to act like a referee. When two boxers fight and become tangled up, the referee will come and separate the boxers to have a reset. The same with the Holy Spirit. When we get entangled with things, the Holy Spirit will come down and say, okay, break, break, break. He'll separate the enemy over here, and you go back to your corner, but before, before he say fight, you have to know who's in charge. The referee, the Holy Spirit is in charge. He's giving you a reset for a reason. He's giving you a reset. In other words, he's telling you, he's telling you, you don't get entangled with the world. You don't get entangled with it. You, you spiritually box them and you hit them with the word. Amen. You just hit them with the word. The enemy wants to be entangled because when you hit them, the, the, the closest place that, that he can grab you is to tie you up so he can talk to you in the ear. You know, you know he ain't doing all that. You know you need it. I don't care what you're doing. You're still losing. And the Lord comes in and he's separate. Break. And, you, and, 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 and he, he pushes you back. He pushes you back. Now notice when the referee pushes back, he look on both sides. He look at the enemy. He said, you know you're defeated. And he looked at the child of God, and he looked at the child of God, he said, now I want you to focus on me. Fight. 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 And then referees tell the boxers, protect yourself at all times. Ephesians 6, and, and you know, Ephesians 6 talks about the arm of God. We need to protect ourselves at all times because the first place that the enemy wants to attack is the mind. He attacks the mind, then all of a sudden he'll have us thinking. You remember, you remember the garden that God not said? She overthink this thing. And then the enemy just kept going and just kept going and it became overthinking. He said you would be like him. I and and now, now you gotta picture this. Now I can imagine he's sitting up there saying, No, nah, I can't be like him. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can. I, 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 really, I guess I can. See how, you see how it progresses? 
See how progressive? See, see, she knew she couldn't be like him, but the more that she entertained the thought, the enemy just stand aside and said, now I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let you get the consequences behind this. Now, Lord, you got to deal with that now. But the devil didn't know that God had a bigger plan in progress and in mind the person of Jesus Christ. That's that's one calculation that coming to a close. It says, uh, Galatians 5 and 1 says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. When the Lord separates us, we don't need to go back. The Lord will give us a good reset if we don't, if we don't allow what we see to go to our heads and to tap into our emotions. We, we, the Lord will give us the, the opportunity to, to get out of the situation. But we have to realize that it's him that got us out of the situation, not for us to go back and say, well, I, yeah, I took this break. Now I, I, I'm refocused now. And you go right back into the situation. No. He give you a hard reset so you can sit back and you can look and say, no, 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 uh, I did this and I did that. Now, Lord, what do you want me to do now? How do you want me to go into this now? So now we're going to take a look at uh, uh, introvert and extrovert people. An introvert person with, uh, is a, a person with qualities of a personality type known as introversion, which means they feel more capable focusing on their inner thoughts and ideas rather than what's happening externally. They don't want to deal. They don't want to deal with stuff that's out here. They, they want to deal with stuff that's up here. They, they know when you hear the word introvert, you may think of someone who is shy or quiet and uh, prefers to be alone. Introverts are more prone to overthinking than extroverts due to their natural tendency to live within their own head. That's a dangerous place to be. Not many times people, you know, use this term back at the prison. Oh, you're an introvert. You're an introvert. Mr. Jackson, you're an extrovert. You're an extrovert. You, you have going. You this and you that. And I'm like, yeah, hey, you, you sure are right. You know, because I was thinking, ain't nothing wrong with the meaning, but it's a deeper meaning behind this thing. Uh, Philippians 2 and 5 said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. You see the difference? Now, the introvert says they living inside their own head, but but I, you don't want to be in my head outside of Christ. Not, <laughs> not for two seconds. Not, not <laughs> it says the introvert is outgoing, overtly expressive person. So somebody would look at me and be like, man, this man, you are, Pastor, you are out, overly outgoing, you're expressive, you not get the party going, and this is snap. Well, the psychology, I hate using psychologists. I studied this guy in college, and he is warped. But uh, psychologist uh, Carl Jung began using the term introvert and extrovert, sometimes spelled extrovert, in the 1920s. These two personality types sort people into how they get to spend their energy. Introverts, John said, turn to their own minds to recharge, while extroverts seek out other people for their energy needs. One study shows that uh, introvert tends to fall into one or four subtype, subtype. Social introverts, thinking introverts, anxious introverts. Now, you know, the, uh, the uh, social one, he, they like quiet, small group settings. Thinking introverts spend a lot of times uh, in their own thoughts, tend to have creative imagination. Oh man, you you real smart. That you 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 can rap like that. You can you into your own mind, but you don't realize it's a devil giving you those ideas. That's right. Yeah. Anxious introverts seek out a long time, not just because they like it, but also because they often feel awkward and shy around people. What all these have in common? They all somehow contribute to excessive thinking in one form or another. Don't let the comparison of the two words fool you because you might feel like you can identify with the meaning of the words. If you are a child of God, you are neither an introvert or an extrovert. That is a lie from the pit of hell. You are a child of God made into the express image of Jesus Christ. Amen. So when people used to tell you, you're an introvert, uh-uh, no, 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 uh -uh. You gonna put that devil on because because that's that that, that may look like it fixed my person out. You know I'm outgoing and this and that. And I told him, well, yeah yeah one time yeah I am outgoing. I mean yeah I'm an expert. But no, I was given uh, an uh, uh, an identity to a demon that was trying to uh, express itself to what I think I am. Did that make sense? Yeah. But I've been born again Amen. and I've been set free. So I'm no extrovert, I'm no introvert. 
I'm a child of the Most High God. So, uh, 2, Timothy, uh, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. Our minds are always gone. Many of us are carrying on conversation inside our heads all day long. Thoughts about one situation out overlap thoughts about another, and we return over and over again to the one that elicits strong emotion. Remember that emotion? is when that devil wants to sit right there in, that, in, in, in those emotions. Uh, a few people by design can successfully compartmentalize their thoughts so they do not overthink. But most of us will engage in overthinking at times. This is normal, but when it becomes a lifestyle of worrying, anxiety, we need to change something. Because that enemy will begin to get in there and do some things. I'm going to skip down. Satan capitalizes on our inclination to overthink by creating doubt and fears about spiritual things. Some Christians who overthink have difficulty resting in their salvation because they overanalyze their grace-based relationship with God rather than resting in the simplicity that is in Christ. That devil will have you always at all. And which would you hear for prayer for today? Uh, I just want to make sure I'm saying, well, did you do that in 85, 86, 89? Well, I, I just, well, well, what are you out there doing, brother? What do y'all, you know, that you, you, you know you can't escape the love of God? Don't you know when you made up in your mind that Jesus is Lord, you accept the Lord, that no, nobody can pluck you out of his hands? Well, well, he, well yeah, I, I And this is what they'll do. They'll get prayer from you. Then the next week, they'll bypass you, and they'll go over there to RJ for prayer. Yeah, I, I've seen it. We, we, we sit down there, whoop, they, they going down there for the same thing. And then the prayer partner sometimes, hey, man, did, did, did they come down to you for the... Yeah, they always question because the devil will always have you to question, do God love you? Is God in your situation? He's not in your situation. He can't be because look what you're still going through. You'll go through all these different prayer parties. We even seen where the prayer line was, uh, they had a few prayer people up here, but people want to go to their favorite ones, right? Mm -hmm. They want to go. And, 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 and you can tell, you stand up there, you like, and, and the devil will be messing with you. They don't want to come to you. Yep. They, they have other people looking at you and all that. What's wrong with them? You know, yeah, they don't want to come to you. And you, you ain't fast. You ain't pray. You ain't ready for that devil. You got stuff going on with you. And, and you just stand up there like this here, just looking. And you know, with your religious face, you just looking. And and, and and the line is way around the corner. And then when somebody say, well, hey, brother, won't you go over there? They be like, I want to stay right here. Yeah, I want to stay. And, and you just sit up there like, Lord, there's something wrong with me. And you have to shake yourself and say, ain't nothing wrong with me. There's something wrong with them. You see, you see how the devil tried to work on, on both sides? <laughs> In closing, spiritual overthinkers may scrutinize and descend a scripture passage until they convince themselves that they have found a new meaning, one that neither the apostles nor Christian leaders of the past have discovered. Cults and false religions have been founded by overthinking. Yeah. You can take the founding fathers of, uh, of psychology and some evil way they took their twisted thinking and kind of like merged it like it's religious and I'm not going to call it the church but I remember a few years ago one of the churches in town they was uh, teaching faith based and they was using Carl Jung and they was using Freud and and when I called to inquire they was telling me yeah man God is doing some awesome things man we studying the, the modern uh, psychologist, man, I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. And, and he said, well, I'm not now, man. He said, they were all Christians. Okay. I think it was, was it Freud that, that, that was using cocaine and, 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 and he was getting high with Sherlock Holmes? And so I was trying to figure, I, I, I read the stuff and I was like, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, this is what y'all using in the church. He said, yeah, if you want the credit, this is what we're using, you know. And, and man, it's great. All of them were Jews. And I was like, whoa. And I and, and I just said, okay, hey, man, nice talking with you, man. Hey, I, I'll get with you later. Whoop. Oh, I ain't in that program. Because what what's going on is that that obsessive thinking, even with a lot of worldly psychologists, they know it's not enough. But instead of submitting to the Lordship of Christ, they found a way how to tap into the religious circle to get validation. Right. And they get that validation, now to them, that, that spirit of lust in them is appeased. 
So now they can have a demon-driven person that killed a lot of people, and instead of the Christian world looking at modern uh, church folk people with the Holy Ghost, they're going to go get that psychologist that don't know nothing but has tapped into. And his ego is so being uh, appeased to where he's really sitting there with his arms folded, leg crossed. He's really in his mind thinking that he's giving this person real spiritual counsel. But it's making the matters worse. So, you know, uh, uh, my prayer is that the prayer is that if if, if we have uh, someone in, in in our Christian wall have identified with these spirits, these two spirits, these introverts, uh, it's a lot of them. it's it's uh, introvert, extrovert, social, introvert, thinking introvert, anxious introvert. Uh, you know you can you can uh, participate in this prayer because I know at one time we all had some form of thinking to where we overthought something and you could have been. Absolutely on the, mo on, 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 on the money, but but is that where God really wanted you to go? You know, I, I can I can testify because I'm, I'm free now, you know, and I continue being free because I, I do have a tendency sometimes to overthink, and and you know Felicia or especially RJ RJ is like nothing bothers him. He just RJ the, 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 the world is falling. RJ uh, what's with him? You know, he he it, it's just he just settled in his thinking. Felicia is the same way. I'd be like, wait a minute, wait a minute, how can y'all eat and the world is falling? How can y'all, you know, well, if God is in control, well, what are you worried about? Oh, hello, you're right, I can eat. So, but I shouldn't be have I shouldn't be told that. I've been saved for a long time. It can happen to anybody. And if you want to participate in this here, you know, that's that's uh, that's fine. Uh, let's repeat these words after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, in the name of Jesus. I repent for associating myself, associate myself as being a, an obsessive thinker, an thinker. Uh, introvert, introvert. Extrovert, extrovert, social introvert, social introvert. thinking introvert, thinking introvert. And, anxious and anxious introvert. I disconnect myself, I disconnect myself. Detach, my detach my name, my identity, my personality, from all associations. I recognize that this is not the personality of Jesus Christ. I exchange these demonic images for the images of Christ, for the personality of Christ. For the personality of Christ is kind, compassionate, humble, and a loving and true servant. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. For whom the Son set free is free indeed. In Jesus' name. Amen.